Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to use something a little different and use Django as the backend framework only. We'll use it to build a simple REST API that will allow us to create, update, delete, and get a list of to-dos. In the next video, we'll use React to make a front-end that will allow a user to interact with the API that we built. If you have a basic understanding of Django, you should be able to follow along with this first video just fine, but you'll probably need a little understanding about REST APIs and how they work to understand how all this works together with the Django REST framework. Uh, but with that said, let's get started building this API. So the first thing we want to do, we need to step our project. So what we'll do in this, in this uh, I have this tutorial folder over here inside of uh, Sublime already. Inside of here, I'm going to create two different folders. And we'll have an API folder, which will hold all of our backend code. And we'll have a frontend folder, which will hold our React code. And we'll do that frontend folder in the next video. So for now, we'll just have an API folder. And so first, I'm going to open up a terminal. And I need to set up a normal Python project. So I'm on uh, Ubuntu. And so I'm going to create a virtual environment um, using virtual env and type my virtual environment, which will be env. Press enter. And that will create a virtual environment. You'll see it show up over here. And then I can type source env slash bin slash activate to activate that virtual environment. And you'll see it over here that is activated. If you're on Mac OS, it should work the same. On Windows, it might be a little different. Um, you'll need to look that up to see how to do it there. Um, but that's um, activated and set up. I can go and install Django and Django REST framework. So I'll do pip install Django and then Django uh, REST framework. And so Django REST framework will give us some extra tools that we'll use to just to build the API um, using Django. And so with that installed, we should be set up and ready to go. And so now, just like we would with any other Django project, I'm going to go ahead and create um, the Django project by typing Django dash admin start project and I'll call this project um, we'll call it API so that's our back end and you'll see here we cut a project created and we have our manage.py and our settings and our root URLs and all that stuff we have here next I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create an app so we'll cd into API and I'll do uh, Python Three manage that py um, start app. And we'll call this one to do. And with that done, we can go ahead and um, we'll create a super user. But before we can create a super user, we need to migrate our changes. So I'll type Python three manage that py migrate to migrate the changes to the database. And then I can go ahead and type manage that py create super user and we'll give it a password and that creates our password clear the terminal it gives us more room here and that should be it to set our project up so now we have our to-do app and we have our API and everything right here so first things first, like we would with any Django project, we'll go into our settings and we'll add our to-do app to the installed app. So right below our installed apps, I'll add a folder or add a, a, another line here. I'll put type in to-do, add our comma and save that. And that should have our project all set up. So what we want to do here, in case you're not too familiar with APIs, um, with a REST API, I should say, we want to return a JSON response instead of a template. So in our views, instead of returning, doing a return render and then passing some template name that will render on the screen, we're going to pass back just some JSON data to the front end. And the front end, which in our case will be React, will use that JSON and parse it and display it to the user. So a lot of this will be similar with how we normally do Django. We need to go into our to-do to -do app. We first create a model. So like we with any, to, any Django application, we need to go ahead and create the data structure for our to-dos. So like I would, like I always do, we'll type class and we'll give it a name of to-do and we'll inherit models.model like we normally do. And our model class will have three different fields. We will have a, we'll have a title, a description, and a completing Boolean. So the title and description are pretty self-explanatory and the completed will just be a checkbox of yes or no or of true or false. And that will tell us whether or not it has been completed or not. So in our front end, we can only show uncompleted to-dos. 
And so we'll create this just like we always do. So we'll type title equals models dot char field. Give it a max length of 100. And we'll do the same thing for our description. And once again, we'll give this a max length of 100 as well. Equals 100. And our completed field, we'll call it completed. And this will set be equal to a models dot boolean field. And we'll give this a default equals false. And so by default, if they don't have anything on here, when they create a new to-do, by default, we want to set this as, as false for completed. Um, and we'll have them mainly mark it as true once they complete it, um, like you would for any uh, to-do app. So I'm going to go ahead and save that change. And I'm going to migrate these changes to our database. So open up our terminal again here. We'll go ahead and type python3 manage.py make migrations and then manage.py migrate. And we'll see here, we have our to-do on the migration, so we are, should be good there with all those changes made. Um, so the next step is where things start to get a little different. Now we have our models, we need to do two, we need to do three more things really. First, we need to create a serializer, and the serializer will take our model data and convert it to JSON uh, that we can then send to our front end. We'll need to create a view set in our views we shall create all of our views for us. So this will be a much more simplified version of what we've been doing before. Instead of creating a create to do and a delete to do and all the different views, we'll create one view set that will handle all of that for us. And then finally, like we do for all of our views, on any Jago project, we need to create a URLs file and put a URL pattern to our view set um, for our different um, views that, that it creates. So hopefully it makes sense. If not, hopefully it will once we create everything. So let's start by creating a new file in our to-do, and we'll save this as serializers.py. And inside the serializers file, um, we need to first import two things. First, from our REST framework app we added, oh, and actually, before I forget, one thing I didn't do in my settings, I only added the to-do, I need to add the REST framework as well. So let's add REST underscore framework to our to-dos as well. Let's go ahead and, add, and just migrate changes one more time, make sure we have everything moved over. So we should be good there. Okay, back in our serializers file now, we need to import from that REST framework app, we want to import serializers. So from REST underscore framework, import serializers. And then we also want to import our model we just created. So from dot models, import to do. And now down here, we need to create a class. So we'll create a class and call it to do serializer. And this will inherit from serializers.model serializer, serializers.model serializers, a serializer, singular, uh, not plural. And then inside this class here, we need to create a meta class. So this will be similar to like our, our form classes we made or other things like that, where we have um, a model, or I should say like our, like our model form class, where we have a model form um, parent class. Inside of there, we have a meta child class. So same thing here, we want to have a class meta inside of our to-do serializer. And this will have two different fields. First, we'll tell what model that we want this to use, which in this case is the to-do model. So we'll do model equals to-do. And then we want to give it what fields we want. So we can use fields, it equals, and we pass in all of our fields. So we have an ID field, which is created by default, um, which is a unique ID, a unique, a unique uh, primary key for each of our um, rows and our to-do model. We have our title and we also have our description and complete it. So description and complete it. And this will serialize the data for us so we can send it to our front end. Let's go ahead and save that now and let's go into our, our views now and create a view set. So like I said earlier, instead of creating a create to-do, an update to loo, to do, delete to-do, get to-do, and all those different to-dos we'll need, um, we can just create one view set that will handle all that for us. We don't need to import render at the top here because we're not going to render anything um, since we're just building an API. But, so instead of this, I want to import view sets from the REST framework. So I do from REST framework, import view sets. 
We also import our to do model and our to do serializer. So from dot models import to do and then from dot serializers import to do serializer. We have this comma here and we'll create our to do serial our to do uh, view set here. So do a class to do view set. And this will inherit from view sets dot model view set view sets dot model view set. And now inside of here, this will have just two lines here. We'll need a query set. So what um, objects inside of our to do model do we want to use in this view set? In our case, it'll be all of them. And, our, and we also need to tell it what serializer class to use. In this case, it'll be to do serializer. So I'll do query set equals to do dot objects dot all. This just tells it to use all the objects that are to do's and set that as a query set. And then next we need to go ahead and tell the serializer class. So we can put serializer underscore class equals and just to do serializer. We can save that. And that's all we need to create a view set. And so hopefully you can see here, this is very simple and very easy and quick to put together um, using the Django REST framework without a whole lot of code. And so next, the final step is just to create the URL pattern for this view set. So instead of our to-do app here, I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna save this as urls.py. And inside of here, I need to import two things. First, from the REST framework, I wanna use this thing called um, routers. So from REST framework, import routers. And I also wanna import our view set we just made. So from .views, import to do view set. Um, let's do router equals routers dot default router. And so we'll use the default router, which will just allow us to register views inside this router. And this will allow us just to easily create our URL pattern and set everything up for us for our view set without having to put a bunch of URLs. And so we can do router.register to register a URL pattern inside of this router. And we'll just put to do. And we'll put in our to do view set. We'll save that. And that's all we need for our app URLs. But like we do for any Django project, we need to import this and include this into our um, root URL so Django knows um, where it's located. So inside of our API folder, um, we'll go to API and find our URLs.py. And inside of here, I need to add, well, first I need to import include like we normally do. So up here in Django.urls, we'll do import include. And then down here, I need to add another path. So do a path and I'll do um, API slash V1. And then we'll do include. And what we want to include here is our router. So we need to import that as well. So up here at the top, I'll do from to do.urls import router. And we're just importing this, just this router here um, that has our, our view set and its URL pattern registered on the router. So this will access this whole thing for us. And so down here, we'll type router.urls to import, to include those, those URLs. And so now we've got API slash v1 slash to do to access everything um, in our view set. And that's all we need to create an API. So if we go to a... Um, our terminal here and we type python3 manage.py run server. It looks like we're getting an error here. Um, REST framework uh, view sets has no attribute model view sets. And it looks like I had just a typo inside my views. So we come here, this S here should be capitalized. We'll go ahead and save that. Come back here and now it should be running. So now if we jump into our, our browser here, we go to localhost 8000, um, you'll see page not found, but you'll see our admin and our API slash v1 here. Um, instead of our sublime text here, if we go to our URLs, our root URLs, we didn't put anything at the root. So we put it at API slash v1. So we go back to our browser here and we go to that. And now it takes us to our API root. And then you can see here, we have all of our included URLs off of that. In this case, we have our API slash v1 slash to do because inside of our to do app URLs, we added the to do here at the end. So 
if we go to that, I click on it, which all it does is just take us to API slash v1 slash to do. Well, then we'll see this to do view set list and allow us to do all the different things we need to do to create, update, delete our, our views or our to do's. So, for example, let's go ahead and create one. So, down here, I'll type just anything and we'll give it a description, whatever. We'll hit post and then it shows up right here. If we go ahead and went to this URL in our browser by going to slash to do slash our ID, in this case, it's one. And then takes us to to do view set instance. It takes us to this singular instance. We can then update this and do my first to do. Hit put, and then updates it. We can go ahead and get it by hitting get, and we also could delete it by hitting delete. And we hit delete, and then deletes it. Uh, we go back here. We can go ahead and create to do my with my second to do and hit post, and it will add another one here with the ID of two. And so we can do everything we want, we want here um, to any of our to-dos. One important thing to note here, if you're not familiar with how this works, um, we'll send a post request to create one, which is why it says post here. We'll send a put request to edit it. So I went here, um, it says put, because I was sending a put request to edit it, and delete request to delete it. And so we're using one URL pattern to do all of those by just sending a different request type, a different HTTP request type. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. If not, um, I would look up a little bit about HTTP requests and um, what the different ones might do. There's a various different ones, but get to get them, put to edit it, delete to delete it, and post to create one are the main ones that we'll be using in most of our, our APIs that we create. Okay, um, and that's really it. That's our whole API. And everything's working. Um, it didn't take very long at all to do, and it was pretty simple and straightforward. Um, the Django REST framework makes it very, very easy to put together an API pretty quickly. And that is it for this video. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, in the next video, we'll go ahead and create a React frontend to um, use this API that we just created. Uh, I'm thinking about doing more videos with the Django REST framework. If that's something you want to see, let me know. If not, um, you know, let me know as well and what you'd rather see. Um, but other than that, that's really it. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.